Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to Call for Help. A little history now, a little history lesson, but a history that's really a recent history, the digital camera. In the last 10 years, the digital camera has gone from being a novelty that no real photographer would want to use to something that almost everybody uses nowadays. Not just consumers, not just tourists, not just people like me and you, but even the pros. You see them everywhere. Mikkel Oland is a pro. He's been shooting film for decades and uh, is, is one of the early adopters of digital cameras. In fact, his new book is all about shooting digital. This is just coming out now from Cybex. It's called Shooting Digital. And uh, this is, th I haven't read the book yet. I've only read chapters from it, but I know how well you write, and I cannot wait to get the full. When, any day now? I, it's at the printer. It should be, printing there. It'll be in the pipeline. <laughs> Very soon. All right. Now, when did digital photography begin? I mean, it, <clears throat> photography itself is almost 200 years old. Right. Uh, right. Started on on you know what silver halide and and then they would right. mix chemicals and you right. couldn't move. Yeah. When did we go digital? That's how I started. I mean I was in high school and I went to the county fair and an old timer had one of those old photo labs there and he said, right. okay you got a job as long as you fit into this little dark room. You take because <laughs> you were so little. I, I, I you can fit in. in. And I had to go through all the chemicals and I my fingers turned brown yeah. and I, I did that for a long time. You made a great book and I, I, sh I, did, I didn't notice you didn't bring it but no, I have a copy of it. I should have brought it in, the county fair book of these pictures that you took. And that's about as traditional photography as, as you can get. Yeah. In 1981 I had the, the fortune to uh, meet Ansel Adams, mm -hmm. the great Ansel great. Adams, who great. was about 80 years old at that time. Yeah. And I was a youngster right? Right. going to the master right. and we talked about chemicals and printing and shooting traditional photography and then at the end I said but if you were starting out again what would you do because right. I'm a lot younger than right. you and he oh oh he started talking about these incredible images that NASA was producing from the the Voyager spacecraft from, from, uh, the, from the moons of, uh, that, of Jupiter there's there's one of those early and that's digital that was that was digital, and it was amazing because here were these. This, here was a spacecraft that was literally millions of miles away, and it was transmitting back to us beautiful landscapes. It had to be digital. You can't send a film. There's no one-hour photo in, in, in Jupiter, <laughs> right? So, well, the transmission was what was very interesting. That you could just see that thing. If it had its own processors or on board, right. it would have processed the film, made the print, and sent it back <laughs> to them. That wouldn't <laughs> no, work no, no, either. No. Yeah. Anyway, so he he uh, he told me about that. And it was so exciting for him, the idea that you don't need film anymore, that you could actually convert it into electronic impulses. So when did the first digital camera come along that you could use? Well, just a few months after that wonderful uh, meeting with Ansel Adams, Sony announced the Mavica. And the Mavica was a still video camera. It was a video camera. Still video camera. At this time, digital was not part of our vernacular. Right. We didn't use that word like we do now. Right. Right. It was an electronic camera. And it was so exciting that someone had actually announced a camera that didn't use film. Uh, and now, what kind of, we now talk about resolution, we talk about megapixels, yeah. Can you, are there megapixels in this kind of uh, camera? No megapixels. No, because it's, <laughs> no. not, it's not really digital. Well, no, no, yeah. you could, you could, they had screen resolution, so yeah. it, was, it was about 640 by 480. This is an image that you took for an album, a Don Paul uh, album cover. When the, when the cameras finally became available in, in the late 80s, I got my hand on one, and of course I was very excited. And it doesn't I, look like film. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, we, but we you made a, an art out of the fact that it's kind of the colors of weird. Course. But you know where it really worked, Leo, was when we started doing CDs. And this is a this very This is a, a CDI, which is a format you don't see anymore. Yeah. I shot over a thousand images with the Sony Mavica in 1989, 1990. Perfect for this, because this was only for the screen. That's all it was meant for. Right. Which was then what could propel, what drove the digital camera forward, too. Because if we could just be shooting for the screen, we didn't worry Why about Why press this film? Why have to scan yeah. it in? Yeah. And we should explain the difference between the film camera and digital camera yeah. is a film camera is an analog medium that right. basically kind of records in particles and chemicals yeah. on the, the right. film what the, what the light is coming right. in. Right. It, it captures light. light. They both capture light. Yeah. A digital camera and a traditional camera capture light. Yeah. But one puts it onto film and you have to use a chemical process to release the latent image that's right, there. Right. The other converts it into bits. Ones and zeros. Digital. And this, and is, this is from the uh, Sony Mavica. This is how you stored those photos. Yeah. Now, we, this is a very interesting um, uh, point to make here. This camera, this storage device holds 25 high resolution images. Not very many pictures. I have thousands of these disks. <laughs> I can't get any of my pictures out of that because I do not anymore have 
a card reader. Nothing exists to read them anymore. Yeah, this is only 12, 13 years ago now, and yeah, I can't get to those images. That's going to happen again and again. We got to remember so. this. Get those images in some form where you can and keep up with the technology. <sighs> Absolutely. All right, let's let's yeah. move ahead a little bit. Yeah. Uh, where was when? So the Sony Mavica was not really a digital camera; it was a video camera. Well, we call it. We called at that time. We were calling it electronic photography. When did we get? And it? digital photography came out. In 1990, 90. when DICAM came out with this tiny little thing they called the, the Photo Man, yeah. and it was several hundred, it was like $800 for 370 pixels by 240 pixels. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Great scale. I remember that. Great scale. It was terrible. Yeah. It was junky. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, this whole thing. This, I had one of those, I think. <laughs> Leo, this book that I wrote in 1992 called Digital Photography. This is probably the first digital photography it's book. It's one of the first, but it, the first title was Electronic Photography. And they had the last minute when, all of a sudden these digital cameras are appearing right so now we go ah that's where it's going so right. let's call it digital photography so in a way you you get some credit for popularizing the the, the term digital photography well it made a big difference to the professionals to too because video images. has always had a cachet that wasn't right. good enough but the right. minute you start talking digital oh, that's great Graham Nash the Beautiful performer picture. actually did that but pixelated and because wanted, we didn't have that, he, well, it was part of the, part you, of the you made, a, made, a, okay. made a virtue of necessity, exactly. it was what you had to do. We did it. Now, professional photographers are using digital cameras. Oh. Are they as good as film? Absolutely, no question. This camera here, I which you, <laughs> I'm not going to check I'm your pockets before this Nikon. we leave. I love this thing. Uh, it's 6 megapixels, which is roughly equivalent to what you get with 35 millimeter film. There's a lot of variables in there, and people are going to argue with me, but about 6 megapixels will get you 35 millimeter film quality. And man, it has a lot of the features of a good quality uh, professional camera. You see them at sporting events. No. News, news photographers have to use them because it's no. so fast. Yeah, we've done the zone. tipping point. We've gone from yeah. all sudden overnight in the last two years all photographers professionals are using the are the fine art photographers using it they're still I, film aren't they no i think fine art I, I what i've always liked about fine art photographers is they use whatever they get their right. hands on i mean right. i have a friend They'll who uses, use the, they use, uses something called the diana which is a, a camera with a plastic lens wow. that makes wonderful images it doesn't matter for a real artist will just guess, sure, use it more. as a tool one more picture this what is, is this publication well this is this was me shooting back 12 years ago with this huge I wish I had the camera. It was like twice as the size of this and it was producing <laughs> those tiny little images. Did they think you were a crackpot when you came in the door? That cost $20,000. Oh man! <laughs> and now a camera 10 times as good, just a hundred bucks, yeah. a couple hundred oh, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. What we've a revolution. A ways, what a revolution. But we've got a long ways to go too. Yes. Well, but we're getting there. No, I, I think we've, we're I'm really sold. in an exciting time now, but we don't even know how far it's going to go. I fought it for a long time, and then, yeah. now I wouldn't go back. Yeah. I love it. And even my wife, who, who really loves film and loves shooting yeah. film, is starting to shoot yeah. digital. Well, the book happen. Shooting Digital is certainly one for anybody who's making that move. From Cybex, Michael Oland, its author, and we're, great to, we're so grateful that you came in and shared a little bit of the history, the history that you've lived, from, from the very first book on digital photography to Ansel Adams. And, Wow. Where are we going? We don't know, but I know you'll be along for the ride, and we'll have you back anytime you want to talk about the future of digital photography. If you want to know more about digital cameras, our website is the place to go, techtv.com slash call for help. Coming up.